Hello and welcome to another video. So in this video, we're going to be talking about sequences and what a limit is when we talk about sequences. So what is a sequence? A sequence is just a list of numbers. So let me just write that down real quick. Let me just write that down real quickly. So a sequence is literally just a list of numbers. Now, this list could be infinitely many numbers or it could be a finite list of numbers, but generally we tend to use a finite number of terms. So it could be finite or infinite. So like so. But we're going to assume there's an infinite number of terms for the purposes of uh, calculus one. So generally we write a sequence with curly brackets. So kind of like this. So E1 a2, a3, and so on. So this is generally how I write a sequence. And in a very compact way, we generally write A1, so AN, sorry, not A1. And then we start, and then in the lower kind of part of this, we use N equals one. It, it could be zero, it doesn't matter. And then infinity. So that just means that, so this is just saying we have an infinite number of terms that's going from one, to, well, infinity, starting with n equals 1, so a1. Okay, so what does this kind of look like? Well, this is just a list of numbers. So basically, the graph of this is essentially a discrete set of numbers. So to kind of emphasize, to kind of emphasize my point, let's kind of compare two graphs for a second. So suppose this graph right here, this graph right here is y equals 1 over x. And this one right there, is f of n equals 1 over n. So this right here is a function. And this right here is a sequence. And generally, we tend to use n's for representing a sport of sequences. So 1 over x something looks something like this. I'm going to assume furthermore that x is bigger than 0. So therefore, 1 over x is going to look something like that when it's a function. But for a sequence, it's going to look a little bit different. For a sequence, it's going to look something like this. Notice how there's a discrete number of terms. So it's not a continuous set of points. It's a discrete set of points. There's points which don't exist in between two subsequent points. So this is essentially a difference between a sequence and a function. So on that note, now let's talk about limits of sequences. So what do we mean by a limit? A limit is essentially saying, if I approach a point, how close can I get to it? So what does that mean? So for example, let's consider this graph here. So let's take, let's take about this point. A limit is essentially saying, okay, what happens when I get really, 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 really close to that point? So as close as possible you can get. What's it approaching as I reach this point? Well, it's gonna approach that point. So as I get really, really, really close to that point, what is it approaching? Well, it's approaching this specific point right there. So if I call this point x equals a, for example, as my limit approaches a, it's going to, you know, reach a. And the limit is going to be equal to whatever the corresponding y value is. So this is going to be the limit, the value of the limit. So just to kind of recap, the limit is essentially saying, what happens when I do, when I reach really close to A? Well, it's going to approach A. So, or in other words, when I approach A, what value do I get close to? Well, you get close to the value at x equals A, which is A. And the value of that limit is f of A. So, that's what a limit is essentially saying for a sequence. So, of course, if a limit kind of doesn't you know, tend to a point, suppose just kind of like a jump here between these two points. So from here, it goes to this point, but from the other side, it goes to here or something. So if something kind of weird happens there, well, the limit is, doesn't see, is said to not exist. So as a result, whenever in a sequence, a limit kind of approaches a certain value, we say that that point converges. So convergent just essentially is saying, when I approach a point, I'm going to actually reach that point. So if I call this point right there, if I call this point x equals a, 
or I shouldn't say x, I should probably say n equals a. That means this point right there is going to be f of a. So as my limit reaches this point, it's going to reach a. So it's going to converge or it's going to come to the value of a, which is f of a. So that is what is meant by convergent. Okay, now we should have to look at some properties. So some properties right here. Okay, for these properties, I'm going to assume that the following sequences. So I'm going to assume that a n, so this is one sequence, and I'm going to assume that another sequence, b n, I'm going to assume that both of these sequences converge. So in other words, just to kind of recap, when I say converge, I mean it tends to a fixed value. Like it doesn't blow up or something, or it doesn't jump around or something weird happens. I'm saying as it approaches some value of n, it goes to a fixed value of y. So as it goes to a fixed value of a, I get a fixed value of y for the sequence. Okay, so I'm going to assume that a n and b n, body sequences, converge. Then the following properties kind of hold here. So there are six properties. The sixth one is a little bit strange, but the other one should be kind of intuitive. So let me just write these all out. So the first one is the limit. So this is the notation that's generally used for limit. We usually write the word lim, and then we write n approaches. So this little arrow means it approaches. And generally, since we have an infinite number of terms for a sequence, we generally tend these limits to infinity. So the limit as n approaches infinity of a n plus or minus b n. So basically, I'm saying the, ad the addition or the difference of two sequences is equal to the limit of these ones individually. So in other words, the, this is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of a n plus or minus the limit as n approaches infinity of b n. Okay, so the next one is the limit as n approaches infinity of some constant c times a n is equal to c multiplied by that limit as n approaches infinity of a n. So essentially, I can take the c out, and then I can just go to the limit as n approaches infinity of that same limit, of that same sequence, sorry. Next one, if I have the product of two limits, or two sequences rather, and I take the limit of the, of the product, I can break this and write the product of each individual limit. So in other words, I can do this. The limit as n approaches infinity of a n multiplied by the limit as n approaches infinity of b n. So I can essentially just kind of split up this limit into two individual products. Okay, so next one I'm just going to split up a little bit just to make some room. Okay, the next one is the limit as n approaches infinity of a n over b n. So essentially I'm taking a quotient of something. I can write it as the quotient of the two individual limits. So the limit as n approaches infinity of a n divided by the limit as n approaches infinity of b n. Now, of course, this assumes that the denominator can be zero since we can't divide by zero. So we have the additional restriction that the limit as n approaches infinity of b n cannot equal zero. So hopefully that makes sense. The next one is if I have to limit as n approaches infinity of a sequence a n to the power of p, well that's going to be equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the sequence itself all raised to the power of p. Now this is assuming of course that p is bigger than zero and a n is bigger than zero as well. And the reason for that is because well otherwise the series is going to diverge and we don't want that to happen. Okay. And the last one is actually called the squeeze theorem, for a sequence at least. So the squeeze term is very simple. So let me write that down. So this part is called the squeeze theorem. There's another one for functions, but it's almost it's literally the same thing, except 
we use functions, not sequences. Nevertheless, so this one is called a squeeze theorem. Okay, so the squeeze theorem is very simple. It says that if I have a sequence which is in between two other sequences, so in other words, if I have an which is less than bn, which is less than or equal to cn, so in other words, bn is bounded by two other sequences. If this is true, and let's furthermore suppose I have the limit as n approaches infinity of an equals l, and the limit as n approaches infinity of bn, well, let's say that's also equal to l. Well, that would mean that the limit, oh, sorry, not bn, that should say cn. So suppose the limit of both an and cn are both equal to l. Well, that would mean that the limit as n approaches infinity of bn is also equal to l. So essentially the squeeze term is very simple. It says that if bn is between two functions or two sequences an and cn, and if a and c n both go to L as n approaches infinity, then b n, so the one in the middle, also has to go to L. So graphically, it looks something like this. So graphically, if I have two sequences, let's say, I'm going to use uh, different colors for this part. So suppose this part right there is, sorry, that should probably just fix that a little bit. So suppose this sequence right there, this blue one, let's call that an. And suppose I have another sequence, so I'm going to use green for this. Suppose this part right there, this sequence is cn. And let's say that, as a uh, let's say that subsequently, uh, let's see, let's use red for this part. Bn is in between an and cn, so it's kind of bounded or contained within a and c n well so let's say this is the situation so this is what it means for something to be bounded so a n and c n are my two kind of sequences and b n is in between these now essentially what i'm saying is if both these limits approach the same point so let's run our axis to kind of emphasize what i'm talking about here so this graph right there was to show boundedness so oh, I should probably use a different color for this. Uh, let's use white once again, and let's run another axis. Okay, so let's say I have a sequence that looks something like this. So something like that. And let's say my second graph, so that my CN looks something like this. Okay. And let's say my bn, so the one in the middle, looks something like this. Okay, now clearly at this point right there, all three of the sequences approach the same point. So let's call this point L. So let's, yeah, actually let's just label it here. So suppose that at this particular point, so x equals, well this is a negative x axis, so let's call this minus a. So at x equals minus a, I get the value is L. Well, if you notice right there, it's it's the same value for all three of these functions. So the blue one, the, the red one, and the green one. So because all three of these values at x equals negative a all go to L, well, obviously the one in the red also has to go to L as a result. So this is what the squeeze term essentially says. So the reason I drew this graph is, is to just show you what, it's, what, it's some, what it means for something to be bounded. This graph is actually what demonstrates the squeeze term. So once again, the blue graph is the an, the green graph is the cn, and the middle one, so the red one, that's my bn. So if bn is bounded between the blue graph and the green graph, and at some point both all three graphs reach the same value, well, obviously, obviously the one in the middle also has to go to the same value. Okay, so that right there is the squeeze term. So nothing too crazy right there. Okay, the next topic, which will be a pretty short one, we'll be talking about monotonic sequences and what it means for a sequence to be increasing or decreasing. After that, in the next video, we'll be doing a bunch of examples, which will hopefully kind of cover the gist of how sequences work. See you then.